Today on JIC Labs, we're going to show you how you can look up stocks and other information associated with them with Microsoft Excel. Let's get started. Now that you have Excel open and ready to go, you're going to see we have some data up on the screen. We have some stocks here that we want to look up, their price, 52 week high and low, the PE ratio, and then we're going to pretend we have some shares and calculate our total value. Now, one thing to note, this is for Microsoft 365. Older versions of Microsoft Excel do not have this capability. So first things we want to do is we want to have some stocks. And right now we've put in what we think their stock symbols are. So we're going to highlight A. We're going to come up to our data ribbon. And in the top center, we're going to see data types. We're going to click on stocks and it's done a lot of work for us. So it's assumed, let's expand A a little bit. It says we were looking for Microsoft, Google, Ford, and Tesla, but we have a question mark here in A4 for Apple. On the right hand side of the screen, we can see data selector, which is a little bit blocked out. So let's move me out of the way. And now we can see it says, what are we looking for in A4? Well, we could come in here and just type, well, type the word Apple, and we're going to hit the search button and it's searching and here we go well we're going to select apple so you can see now it's corrected itself to aapl versus the appl that we had so now we want to find the current price so let's click on microsoft on a3 and you'll see that there's a little box up here we'll click on this guy and we see that there is a pop-up window with a bunch of information we can choose from 52 week high, low, which we'll get to in a little bit. And then we can just come in here and we want to find price, which will be the current price. Again, we're clicked on A4. We'll hit that button again. And we want, we'll scroll and find 52 week high. We'll click on that again, 52 week low. And again, you can see all of these information you want it, we can include. Like we want to include what industry are they in? And we can see that they are in software and IT services. But what you can also see is, oops, I had PE ratio there. So we're going to come in, we're going to insert to the right. And we're going to say, and we're going to have that added in. We'll go to the home tab, sort of these out and add in the borders. So again, we'll click back on a three. We hit the plus, now we want the PE ratio, and we'll scroll till we find that, and we're gonna click it. And now we have that all set up. But how do we get it down? Do we have to do that for every single field? No, you do not have to select that for every single stock. You can come up here in B3 and highlight over the F, the PE ratio, and click and drag them down. And as you can see, it has filled out that information for us. So now let's say we had some shares of all these companies. So now let's say we have, let's say 10 shares of each of these companies. So we're just gonna come in here, enter the tens and good to go. Now we wanna know what's the value, our current value of those shares. So our value is gonna be number of shares times the price. And we'll copy that down. And if we wanted to total, We'll use the sum function and we can see we have $44,618.95 in these fictional shares that we're saying we own. With this information that you're able to pull from Microsoft Excel, that Excel links up and is able to pull that information for you, you can create and track your portfolios. Well, that's great, Josh. Why would I want to do anything like this if I just have E-Trade, Fidelity, what have you? Why don't I just log into those brokerages and check my information for that? Well, in most cases, sometimes you may have more than one. Sometimes you may have a 401k plan with work, perhaps a previous employer, and you may have a Roth or whatever. You may have multiple outlets in which you have investments through work and maybe through personal or some combination thereof. So now you would have to look and log into each of those brokerages to see your totals. 
But if you built this Excel spreadsheet, you could have a list goes on and on of everything that you may or may not own, and you could see it in one quick summary page. Also, this is a very, very simplistic lookout that we've done with these functions. We could go into building a much more in-depth where we could go into, we bought it on X date, 10 shares. This was the price that we paid. This was our initial investment, and this is where we are now, and we can calculate gains and losses. Actually, let's do that right quick. We're gonna hide C, D, and E, and we're gonna add in, like we said, purchase date, and we'll just call it P date so we don't run out of room, and price, P price. We're gonna say we purchased all these stocks on January 5th, 2022. We're gonna come in here and say we purchased these all at random prices. So we're gonna say 300, 180, 2900, 18, and 900. And then we're gonna see our invested dollars is exactly the same as total value, where we're taking the number of shares times the price we paid. And then we see we spent $3,000. So our gain versus losses will be our current value or what we've called total value minus invested. And we're going to copy that down. And we see that right now we have $1,500 in gains. If you want it, you could come up to the home ribbon and go to conditional formatting and we could set a rule. If it's greater than zero, we're gonna fill that with green. And then we're also gonna come up and make a new rule. If it's less than zero, we're gonna make it red. So now we can see we are gaining on Microsoft, gaining on Tesla, but we've lost on Apple, Google, and Ford Motor Company. So that is a quick look at the data ribbon, data types, and stocks. But there is another equation that we should discuss since we're discussing stocks today in Microsoft Excel, and that is stock history. Stock history is only available in Microsoft 365. Older versions do not have this feature. So let's jump into stock history. Equals stock history, open those parentheses. So you can either quotations MSFT for Microsoft, or we can come up here and click on Microsoft. The reason we've done this down below is because we're gonna have date ranges and everything to that effect. And our start date is gonna be 1-5 which you can highlight the date that you have here, which we, in our case is G3, or you could do quotations in the date, which we will do comma for our ending date of 1-7-2022, quotation, comma, and it wants to know how often the interval we wanna know this. Well, that is gonna be daily, so we'll say zero and close out those parentheses. We're gonna hit enter, and we're gonna see that since we're using Microsoft 365, it automatically populates that array for us. And for Microsoft, these are the closing values over those dates. If you guys like this video, let us know down in the comments below. Go ahead and play around with these features. If you have some stocks, great. If not, maybe you just wanna build an Excel spreadsheet that'll track data for you if you are trying to research some companies. Again, nothing we said is this video was financial advice, but thank you for joining us and learning how you can potentially track your stocks and or your portfolios with Microsoft Excel. Thank you all for watching and we'll see you next week.